Hello everybody and welcome to the Tarda Zone Talks and we have another guest on with us tonight. We're going to keep the good vibes going um, uh, because obviously we've had a lot of negativity, let's just say, over the last five years and most of it justified, uh, my I add. Um, obviously the current era hasn't gone down well with a lot of people but something amazing that happened as you all know uh rtd was announced as the new showrunner of doctor who the 60th anniversary and beyond and i had a big panel on that night uh, that day i should say uh because we went live 40 minutes after it broke um and we had a big panel on and as you know and i said this last night as well with me conversation with uh garminator by the way if you haven't checked that out please check that out as well that stream is worth listening to by the way folks um but as i said last night this was an emotional announcement and some of the panelists got very emotional and especially the guests that i have on tonight now obviously they've had a few few more days now to let the news fully sink in uh, i've been informed that they've uh, taken plenty of notes um so without further ado because uh we're going to be streaming on this for the next hour because we have rick and marty watch alongs uh, later on as well so uh without further ado i'll bring on my next guest who is a huge rtd fan uh by the way grew up with his era of doctor who so this meant a lot to him this announcement uh let's see how he's how he's doing uh today uh how are you marty i'm not too bad i'm still in shock <laughs> you're still in shock are you i, I just i just um i haven't shut up about it since like anybody that spoke to me over the past like four or five days that's all i've been saying <laughs> i've been chatting about this and they're like will you shut up uh so yeah um uh just million and one things have been running through my head in the past couple of days just about the whole thing and whatnot so i've been uh just like writing the odd thing down uh simply because it's frying my brain to, to, yeah. to have it in you know um but yeah it's it's sort of but, still on un unreal despite uh <sighs> despite it all be confirmed by now you know right well here i was gonna i suppose the first question i should ask you now obviously the dust is still settled but the dust is settled now but what i've noticed is there's still huge buzz in this fandom and i can tell by you that you're still still buzzing away but i have to ask the question obviously right and the question is this is this the right move is this bringing rtd back in the current situation that we're in right now do you think it's a good decision a master stroke or as was said last night on last night's stream um with garminator he said that this is a full rescue mission this is like he came back because he's seen the the dire state of the show and for the love of the show um do you think he can strike lightning in a bottle a second time marty i know you're a huge fan so maybe yeah. you can give your thoughts and feelings on that well you can sort of call it this would be his third time catching lightning in the bottle because he done it with Eccleston and he done it with talent. So whoever he does it with next and he does it well, it'll be his third time. It'll be his third bite at the cherry. Um I mean, obviously the first thing that comes into my head is you know when they were looking as to who was gonna take over. Uh Obviously, you're going to go with something that's, you know, if you know something works and you know that the public like it. Uh, bear in mind, it was 12 years ago from his last episode. Uh, of course, that's the first thing you go to. Um, 
But RTD is on record as saying that he would only come back if the show was in dire need of rescue. Uh, he said that. Him and Julie Gartner and Jane Trotter made a pact, said that they would only come back if the show was going to be rescued. Uh, so whether that's the case or whether it's the case that, you know, maybe it's been, maybe he's come up with ideas over the years, which is what I've sort of been thinking. Maybe, maybe there's been ideas coming into his head for the past 10 years he's been away and maybe he's got in contact with the BBC saying, listen, I know he's probably want fresh blood, but I'd love to have another stab at this. You know, there's you know, there's a lot of ideas that have come to my head. But well, I can know. tell you, we were talking about last night on stream. Uh, this is a rescue mission. They don't BBC um, are by admission, but not actually publicly coming out and saying it. This is them saying they got it wrong. But I wanted to ask you because some good news has actually come out of it. Like it's been all great news. Don't get me wrong. But I think the sticking point for some people was, right, and there's still a lot more fans to convince, you know, this is the reason why I'm doing these streams. Yeah. Because I want to bring people on like yourself that grew up with this era, to, you know, hopefully then that buzz and excitement can uh, infect others out there. You know, we I, I, I do have high hopes. But here, here's the thing, right? BBC Studios and Bad Wolf Productions will be doing this. So a lot of things what fans were saying for the last few years that it literally had to be taken out of BBC's hands and co-produced. Now that's happening, and that was a sticking point for a lot of fans. Okay, now the Jordan last night stream as well. Another sticking point for people will be who they cast as the next Doctor. Um, I wanted to ask you, and I know you've got a million things that you want to say, but in, in regards to the casting, which I think is very important for a lot of fans, and as was uh, spoke about on the channel last night, um, it's going to be very interesting what type of doctor we're going to get. What is his story arc going to be? You know, Because with Christopher Eccleston, there was a clear story arc there. He was broken after the time, the time war. Then we had David Tennant's. Uh, doctor, there was a clear understanding uh, uh, where his doctor was going. So there's a lot of things to come up that will excite fans, change a logo, sonic screwdriver, all of this other uh, stuff. Um, do you want to talk briefly about some of that stuff and tell us how you feel about it? Um, obviously, <laughs> um, I think the whole thing, as you say there, the whole thing will set in with me when I start seeing, you know, when you see the new logo for the first time, when you see who's cast, when you see what they're going to wear, um, you know, you, you can guarantee that you're going to get a picture in the next 18 months of the new doctor standing beside what will probably be a redesigned TARDIS exterior on the new logo. And that's what it's going to, that's what it's going to seem real then. Uh, but who they cast is the doctor. That's the big question. Uh, and I've been, you know, up on Twitter, I've been throwing a few names up that I think could be in the line, you know, based on RTD from 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 watching what he's done before and the moves he's taken. It seems likely that it's going to be somebody he's worked with before. Um, we know from the names I threw up, just for example, he's worked with Russell Tovey before. Um He's what he remember. He was midshipman frame in the Voyage of the Damned episode. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was the guy. Don't I think he, I will think this is right. He was the guy that he said would make a brilliant eleventh Doctor. You, know, he said if he was staying, he was the guy he was going to cast as the eleventh Doctor. He said that before. I think he said that in the book, his, his writer's tale book, that Russell Tovey was the guy that he would have cast. Whether he's still in the frame or not, I don't know, but I think it I wouldn't good. mind him as the doctor. Actually, I think he's a he's a talented guy. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that would be a good show. Another guy, uh, Ben Wishaw, uh, best. Yeah, over. his name pops up all the time as well. Yeah, he he does. Yeah, best known yeah. for you and James Bond. Uh, he's a free agent now. Uh, no time today. He's out tomorrow night. So. 
he's probably a free agent after that. But the thing is, as much as I'd love to see it go back to a man, uh, I do get the feeling that RTD will go for another woman, or at least I reckon he may be not forced, but I think it may be, um, what's the word? Suggested, or or, or sort of or sort of I, I, I deal, uh, at, at, on the under the BBC's terms. But then again, Bad Wolf are involved, so Jane Tranter and Julie Gardner are going to have a say on the next Doctor. And they yeah, are- well, it's been co-produced with BBC Studios, not BBC themselves. It's yeah. been taken out of BBC's plans. Yeah. And last night's stream, uh, it was if we if our uh. I have to be careful the way I word this, but uh, Jordan Air talk with Garminator, it was indicated that he wouldn't go with a, a woman, yeah. that he'd actually go with a man and wouldn't rule Michael Sheen out either, um, to, well, uh, to be honest. Now, well, you, you are right. It would. It, it, I think whoever is going to get it probably has worked with him before and they would be front runner, but that doesn't necessarily mean did he work with christopher eccleston before he did uh dr I mean, i'm not 100 percent sure i think um, i know he worked with david tennant on yeah. casanova but if he didn't work with christopher and that was his first time well then yeah. he could go with someone that he has a work look at the end day with the cast and that will be important for a lot of people and right now all we can all do as fans is really speculate who we think he might uh, choose, but at the end of the day, him and his team will. I don't think Russell. I'm gonna say this to you, Marty, just to kind of put your mind that is during the conversation last night. He's not coming back if he doesn't have full control. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. I right? so I wouldn't be worried about what BBC say to him. This is BBC Studios in co-production with his production company. Yeah. So. Like he's got his team there. They obviously Russell T and you are right about one thing. Um, he's not coming back unless he has a clear idea of where he wants to bring this. Right? I wouldn't believe that he'd just come back for. I I know he'd come back out of loyalty, and because the show is struggling, but I don't think he would have made that final decision unless he under unless he knew that he had. A plan in place and knew exactly where he wanted to take his next era do you know what i mean so don't be worrying about what bbc say listen fans are being listened to they're looking at everything very carefully polls mm-hmm. the whole lot right they're listening to the licensees we were told last night doctor who magazine now will start getting more access than they did under this current regime yeah right? there's talks of other stuff going on so I mean, it is a, it. Look, uh, your reaction when when the news broke was summed up a lot of the fandom, right? Uh, everybody, it was an emotional release. I do honestly believe mm-hmm. that yeah. we are yeah. heading towards another golden era. He's a more mature RTD now. He's yeah. just uh, he's just recently won awards, and as it was said last night, think about it. The focus is on him now because he won those awards. Yeah. Now he's showrunner of Doctor Who. Look at the buzz around the fandom now. Look at some of those Facebook groups that were dead for years suddenly starting to speak up again. Yeah. This has had a wide, uh, wide impact, right? Already before even we've seen anything, there's a buzz from people like yourself and myself. I have to say, I, I haven't been this excited in a long, long time. But... uh Marty, you said you had a lot of notes and a lot of stuff that you wanted to actually, <laughs> you know, uh, talk about. So go on. Uh, what, what? Obviously, you've been thinking about this a lot now since he's been cast. So what were some of the things that were going through your head that you wrote down? Um, I suppose the first thing, it's at the bottom of the list, but I suppose I'll read it out first. Um, uh, the 60th anniversary, um, mm-hmm. that's going to be the first thing. That'll be the main focus. Um I'd love to see him. I've put two things down for it. I says, obviously, I think we can we can all say now that it's it's pretty much a guarantee that talent's going to be in it. 
um, hundred percent. Uh, but I would love to see him bring in McGowan. I'd love him to bring in Paul McGowan for the episode. See, a lot of fa- again, that's another. See, since this announcement's being made, yeah, I've seen a lot of people mention Paul McGowan's name yet again. Um, all I'll say is if he's coming back, right, which we know he is, right, and he's doing the 16 and beyond. Right, we know Russell T perfectly well. Right, he'll get you'll get Doctor Who steady, get it back on strong foundations again. Right, the view hopefully get the viewership back up. Right, keep those numbers keep going up. Right, and then he'll probably start thinking of spin offs and expanding the universe like he did the first time with the Sarah Jane Adventures and obviously with Torchwood. Yeah. So I, I look at it, I wouldn't rule out Paul McGann coming back in some capacity, but not on the main show. I don't think oh, that yeah. will happen. Mm-hmm. But I, I I think you know, I think a Paul McGann spin off is is due. Uh make it more uh like uh, adult adult themed for the for the adults, because obviously it's the time war. You can make it, you know. You can make it that that it's gritty and stuff, and it and it hits hard home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think he's capable of doing that. So oh. um, I I I I would love to see him in the sixty. Maybe the sixty could springboard his spin off, but I think it's too early to be, you know, right now. Uh, even though the spin offs, I think he will do. I don't know who he'll choose for the spin off. So um, I'm just speculating here. Yeah. But um. I would, if I were him, I would do a Paul McGann. Fans have been screaming out for it ever since his era. Then when Moffat did his anniversary, the 50th anniversary, his name popped up again. His name just keeps popping up, and they can't keep ignoring Paul McGann. He's a terrific actor. He could still do it. We could have a time war situation, you know, but we do have the war doctor now. That's where the problem is created. If he could find some way of explaining that, obviously he'd have to go and Steve, uh, talk to Stephen Moffat about that one because that was Stephen Moffat's arc. So and I'm pretty sure because it's Russell T, I don't think there'd be any problem there because I think those two still like, you know, uh, when Moffat was doing the individual stories during his era, let's be honest, they were some of the best stories that we had. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Um, so 60 so you said david Te- david tennant you'd love to see paul mcgann anybody yeah. else you want to see in this anniversary? See. and who do you not want to see in this uh anniversary special actually do you know something i'm 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 not even uh i think the door should be left open to everybody and anybody um i'd love to see i i think i'd love to see um I'd love to see Free Benjamin to come back as Martha Jones. I'd love to see her again, or even Catherine Tate. Um, yeah. Matt Smith, I'd love to see. Um, I would love to, uh, I know, well, they might be able to do it. It'd be great if they were able to get Karen Gillen on board um, to, to come back as Amy Pond with, with Matt Here, Smith. Here's one for you. Now that RTD is back, he walked with Christopher Eccleston. I think they have made up because then they, they had a bit of a, <clears throat> a falling out, as we know. Well, if we listen to Christopher Eccleston's book, everything wasn't quite rosy, which is fair enough. But do you think Russell T would be able to convince? And I'm not saying it's happening either. I'm just yeah. saying, do you think he'd be able to convince Christopher Eccleston to come back for the 60th? Because I know, I know he's he with me, he's up and down right because he comes out with some crap and it does annoy me right but i have to say on a doctor who level i would love to see his doctor back because i really did in 2005 when he played the doctor when i seen the costume i was a bit uh, right but and then i was hearing the things well he can't he can't be funny and stuff like that and then I saw his era. I, I was devastated actually when he did leave and regenerate into David Tennant. Yeah. Like, that's how much of an impact his doctor had on me. Yeah. Right. So no matter what I think of him personally, 
as the doctor, I would love to see him in this 60th anniversary. I think as much as I'd love to see him back, um, I know that what happened to him has affected him, and it's still, you know, it's still, it's not raw as what it was, but it's still, it's still there. And you know, he's never, he's never sat down and said, "Right, this is exactly what has happened." He sort of always like, I don't want to say danced around it. He's but kind of not the skirted around. It would be probably the right word. Like he's given snippets, but he yeah. won't go into too much detail because uh, I still think, though, even though it's happened. He 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 is proud of his work on yeah. Doctor Who. Um, he just comes across as a bit arrogant sometimes to me. Um, but again, personally, I can keep his per uh, that personal stuff out of there, and and because I would really love to see him back. I agree with you. I think the chances of it are are slim, but you never know because he has been kind of leaving quotes where you never know now. Instead of saying. No, I'm definitely not coming back like he used to. So he has kind of softened his stance. If the right script was there, right? And look, I hate to say it, throw money at him, right? <laughs> but if you can get him back for, for the 60th anniversary, I, I think that would be a coup in itself. It doesn't matter what other doctor you bring in, right? Alongside him, if you're doing a multi-doctor story, just say. Right, yeah. it doesn't matter, and that's no disrespect to any of the other doctors, they're all great, right? And we all do, but they've been trying to get Christopher Eccleston back on this show a few times. That to me would be Russell T. Davis's biggest do uh, as showrunner if he could convince that man. Mm -hmm. Moffat got 98% there, he said, right? Yeah, and, and then Christopher Eccleston got cold feet one way or the other, whatever it was. But he wasn't sure it was the right thing and he decided not to do it for whatever reason. Right? So if Moffat got 98% there. I don't know. Right script under Russell T. And I don't if know. it's stipulated it's a kind of Christopher Eccleston's demands because he has a certain director that he liked working with, that he yeah. felt comfortable working with. I think it was uh Steve Harper, wasn't it? Uh, or yeah, I'm not sure. Graham I'm Harper. Sure. What's Graham his name? Harper. Graham Harper, is it? I think it's Graham Harper, yeah. Yeah, Graham Harper. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I know the interview he done. He he always says in the interviews that he clashed with the three people at the top. So in my mind, the three people was Russell, Julie, and Jane. Um. So if they're coming back, you know, you could see it where he could come back. You know. Well, if they it, extended an olive branch to him, Marty, I mean, yeah. if they approached him to trade him uh -huh. and said, listen, let's let's try uh, uh, not just put the past behind us, but let's try forge a new yeah. relationship here. Because um, he's doing big finish and he's enjoying that. I just yeah. think while he's enjoying Dr. Hill to a certain extent, I think that should be capitalised and exploited. But go on, you've got more stuff that on your list. So the 60th anniversary that was, what's next? Um, I think it comes to music. Um, I, I, I've sort of put down here, the two. The note I wrote down was Murray Gold or Synth. Um, I'm a big fan of Synthwave music. Um, shows like Stranger Things. Um, I, I love the music in that. And even the music in Loki was just brilliant mm -hmm. um and i'd love to see either murray gold come back or even th that sort of i'd be up for natalie holt doing the music because the music in loki is just brilliant here's uh, a here's something for you the other side are saying that and i'm just putting it to you because obviously we do i would bring these people on if they, they wanted to come on and behave themselves but they won't but i do read what they do say on twitter now some of them are saying that if you were to sack uh uh segan uh aquinola is not his name yet yeah if to sack him it'd be very disrespectful do you think rtd even though you've mentioned murray gold and you know last night on the channel uh it, it, it's not it's not confirmed by any means stretch of the imagination but murray gold's name was actually dropped uh you know so 
Um, do you think there's a possibility that he might stick with him? You know, give him a brief though, you know, and with well, Murray there and his guidance, he could, oh, not with Murray, with RTD there and, and his guidance and stuff. We could get because well, he is with other shows supposed to be absolutely brilliant, right? Yeah, he done a he done a documentary, uh, the music for for the a late eleven documentary there for the BBC, and I didn't know who done the music. I just thought the music was brilliant, and then the credits, I said it was him, uh, and it was just completely different. But going from his interview from when he first started, he said that Chris Chimnall wanted atmospheric music. Chimnall told him what he wanted, and so he gave him what he wanted. Uh, but you know, if you had something similar to like the music they had in Spyfall Part One, that big bombastic, yeah, you know, something like that. You know, if a hard TD said, "Listen, this is sort of the direction I want to go in," you know, it, you could give him a second shot at it. I'd be willing to give him a second shot at it. But um, you know, maybe it's just nostalgia click kicking in that a lot of people want Murray Gold back. And as much as I love you know, Murray Gold's music on years and years. Which was RTD show which is brilliant. I've got to ask you this question though. Play devil's advocate here. Now I don't actually um personally I'll give you my opinion now in a minute. Uh -huh. But do you think there's a danger? And I have to ask this question, right? Okay, it's great. We've got Murray Go uh, we've got RTD back, right? We've got Julie and we've got Jane back, right? Fair enough. That's brilliant. Right, then you bring back, say, Murray Gold, right? Then you start bringing back some of the writers that you had from the original era, and then, obviously, you bring in a few new writers as well to keep it fresh. But, well, obviously, RTD will have a brief, and he'll go and tell them. But do you think there's a danger that... that going back to kind of, as people would describe it, say, fan service... There seems to be a lot of fan service happening right now. And that's not a bad bad thing, by the way. I just want to point out that my personal feeling is I think he can actually do better what, than what he did in 2005. But I'm asking everybody in the chat and you, Marty, is there a danger, though, that we could get, say, more of the same? You know, um, and is well, there a danger? Because some have accused Russell T. That his writing has become even more progressive than what it was. Uh, before would you have any worries or concerns there or do you think that because we have it has been made clear to me that he's coming back because he for the love of the show and because he knows it's in trouble so this is a yeah. full rescue mission and i have to make that clear so i honestly believe his heart is in the right place and i want to make that clear as well i'm just asking the question because it has been banded about the fandom and that's what we're all about on this channel so I want to ask you, uh, how do you feel about that? And what would you say to fans out there that are a little bit worried that, you know, they it's, could continue the same way? I can understand um, why people would think that. Uh, we know the formula worked for those five years that he was in charge. charge you know, it, it did work. But that was 12 years ago. You know, what work in 2028 or 2008 might just work the same in 2023. Yeah. That's the thing that I can understand. Now, that's 15 years later from his last series. So, of course, I can understand what people are saying. It might be fan service. And, and some people would say it's not really going anywhere new. It's sort of taking a step backwards. And I can understand mm. why people are saying that. But he clearly has an idea. I mean, I was thinking about this. He clearly has pitched whatever he's going to do. You know, he's clearly, my opinion, he's probably went to Bad Wolf and said, look, I'm, I'm, thinking, do, I'm thinking of doing this. And they probably, the three of them probably went to BBC Studios and said, listen, this is our plan. This is what we're going to do. And the BBC Studios probably said, right, let's, get them, let's do this. Well, the license is, I can tell you, Right when they when they heard because they've been part of the process apparently, um, so basically what was what was said is if the current regime had continued, that some of them were pulling the plug. So look at this. I I, I will say this, and I've been keeping it optimistic because I am genuinely optimistic. What makes me optimistic is the fact that. 
people have been listened to that have been hurted by this this current era right and russell t as marty has said is not coming in unless he has a plan and remember it was said on the channel this was months of planning right so everything has been meticulously put together right by rtd and his team he's went and presented that idea and here we are today i honestly believe whatever he's cooked up is going to be absolutely sensational i think he is going to bring us i think he's going to drag this show by the scruff of the neck and he's going to bring the fandom along for a wild ride i honestly believe that and this is what we need now yeah we need that optimism we need that hope for the future and that's what he does give i mean now, i will be cautiously uh, obviously i'll be cautious all the way through because we don't want to get burned but i don't honestly believe that this man will because he loves the show that's the that's the thing did we ever feel under the chris chibnall era that he actually truly loved Doctor Who. Now, I'm not saying that he doesn't love Doctor Who, but did we get that projection from him? Did we feel that from him? And the answer for me personally is I didn't feel it. Yeah. Sometimes he came across that like he he was never a fan the way he was going on. But with Russell T, we always felt that, even with Stephen Moffat, because when fans called him out, he did take it personally. He did take it personally. Because, yeah. you know, his ego was bruised. But, you know, he'd always try his best by Doctor Who. It didn't just... Uh, his era is, is inconsistent, unfortunately. That's it's, the problem. But. People say... I know you said earlier on about his writing being progressive and some people not having... You know, not being very happy about that. Russell said in his book, you know, if you're going to... Russell says he has his own political opinions. I mean, Jesus Christ, if you watched It's a Sin, one of the last episodes had it where one of the guys pissed into a cup of coffee that Margaret Thatcher then drank. Um, that That's something he wrote. But the way he does Doctor Who is... Um, it's, it's, it's different because, yes, you can say it's always been political, but the way RTD writes an episode is story first, political sort of nod in the back you know it's not the focus of the story whereas it was the other way about yeah um rtd yes you could say you they're they're calling it the, the gay agenda um some fans um but even in his writing since doctor who years and years cucumber um it's a sin you know it was always the story that was put first not the political messaging well, look at Captain Jack. I mentioned this last night on the stream as well. Jordan era, we had Captain Jack. Yeah. Right? Where there was but the way he wrote his character, the character development, you know, uh he, he grew as a character, right? If Chib nods to do it, this is how he does it. He puts him on the screen for 20 seconds, says, I'll have a boyfriend at home and get shot by a Dalek. Whereas with Captain Jack, he had this storyline. He died at the end of, of uh, Christopher Eccleston. Rose brought him back to life, right? And then he reappears then again, right? And then we find out more about him. You know yeah. what I mean? And then they did a whole series of bleeding torchwood around him where we learned even more about his 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 past. Just little snippets, though. That's what I, I like about the Captain yeah. Jack storyline. But that's, of... that's how your character develop a... A, 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 a character from the so-called LGBTQ plus uh, community. That's how you do it. That's how you do it properly. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's it's not like, shoehorned in like it has been in in the current era. Is what I'm trying to say. There's a way that RTD does it. He does it with respect. He builds these characters up for so we you know just not we know everything about them, and then when they die, we feel something for them. Yeah, it's you know that's the thing. Sort of, you know, with RTD, you were introduced to a character and they were built up over time. You know, they yeah. were slowly built up. Whereas when Chindle brought in a character, he tried to dump so much information onto the viewer. You know, uh, you, you know, instead of having that, so instead of you know the likes of 
the likes of Yaz and, and Graham and Ray, and it was all sort of dumped on us in the first episode. Whereas yeah. he could have like just you know built it up through every episode, like with RTD yeah. done. Look what he did with Jackie Tyler, right? Yeah. We see her in the very first episode, right? And then by the time it gets to the end of the era, her whole character has had a, a, a story arc. She meets her parallel universe husband, right? And then she moves to the part, then she gets pregnant. You know what I mean? But all the way through, we got to see Jackie through his era. And every time he introduced her, he added more to her character. Yeah. Remember an yeah. army of ghosts and, and the other, whatever the other, uh, I think I've got them mixed up, but the one where she thinks our our, 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 our dad is back. Yes, but the army out, ghosts, yeah. But, yeah, but it turns out to be the Cybermen. Yeah. Like, look, in that episode, like, it's heartbreaking for her because she honestly believes that our, our dad has, has come back. But that's how you develop a bloody character. It was well developed, well thought out, and and if he had to stretch it over for serious, by the time it got to the uh, at the end of that character, when Rose, Jackie, and all when they got together on the parallel, and we knew that we were never going to see them again, it hit us all. Yeah, it hit us it, all. Even I know I don't like mentioning his name because of everything that's going on at the moment. Look at Noel Clark, Mickey Smith, an idiot in the first series, and then by the time the last time you see him, he's no nonsense. Like he built his character up well too. Yeah, yeah, this is why, why I'm confident about RTD's uh, ability because obviously, as I said, it's been a long time since he's wrote Doctor Who, but he's wrote a lot of successful um, shows since then. And, and he stars actually on the rise. Uh, I mean, listen, listen, then he listen. doesn't need Doctor Who, as it was pointed out last night. He we, doesn't need Doctor Who. Doctor Who needs him. They need we don't him. Know. We don't know how long this has been. Obviously, this is a recent thing that's come on, but we don't know how long Russell T. Davis has been writing scripts. You know, he could have had, you know, for ex just say, for example, he could have had the first episode of this new series coming, Series 14, or whatever the hell they're going to call it, because I've heard they're not going to call it Series 14. Uh, he could have had that in his drawer five, six years ago. Yo, know, what's to say part-time when he wasn't working that he just decided you know what i'm gonna write doctor who and he wrote scripts and they might have went anywhere he might have thought they went anywhere but they were put in his drawer and he gathered them up and gathered them up he could have stories could have had stories sitting in his drawer for years since he left something that he done part-time didn't have to pull all this work in but he done it when he had free time do you know, do you know what was interesting and if you actually look back now you will actually all probably click right but you remember when emily cook was doing the watch alongs the tweet alongs and russell t and stephen moffat all of a sudden start showing up yeah i'm telling you now man that to me is where i think all of this start beginning in my opinion that's where i think it was all started from i'm telling you I think, I, think, I think someone looked at that, seeing, seeing the response of what RTD and Moffat were getting. And let's be honest, even with Stephen Moffat, it was very, very, it was it was very popular with the fans. Both RTD and Stephen Moffat were both trending on a regular basis when they showed up on those tweet-alongs. Yeah. I'm telling you, the licensees and all would have been looking at this, right, and probably thinking, Man, these guys are still popular. What if we were to get one of them back? What if we were to blah, blah, blah? You know? You know, you, you, the thing is, I think it's important. You, Russell has a Twitter account, and I know he doesn't use it very often. But, you know, I, I think it would be good for him maybe to, to start. I know he probably, there's that fear that he might get a lot of grief on it, but... You know, it would be good for him to engage to the fans, and that sort of leads me on to my next point that I wrote, which is I hope they put a good bit of the budget aside for the promotion because if you remember the, the promotion during RTD's first era, it was bloody everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. We had the TV spots. We yes. had we had uh, little 30-second uh, trailers with, with Christopher Eccleston and uh, 
uh Billy Piper doing a countdown telling us how many days it was and this was during the week as well when kids were coming home from school as well when they were sitting down having their tea they were sitting in front of the telly they and were, they, these they were ads were popping up everywhere they were advertising on CBBC. They were advertising on the kids' channels, on the, the demographic yeah. they wanted to put the grab. And where was you know, where was the last time an advert would have been on CBBC for Doctor Who? I, I, I you know, I don't watch CBBC, but I can guarantee you it was probably years ago. Uh, but you know, you know how RTD promotes it, the trailers he does, the the style of promotion, the, that way he done things back then would just be i still think would be perfect for now the way he done it back then if he could do the same now plus you know he has the advantage nowadays of social media and you know he, he could do a hell of a lot more put it like this well, let's be honest marky jordan his era there was a lot of fan engagement i mean he he did exclusive interviews in doctor who magazine quite regularly and uh, not that the current showrunner has actually done that but he was, and we also had Doctor Who Confidential as well, a uh, uh, behind-the-scenes look at how he came up with the all of these concepts and stuff like that. Which so I, I think this correct. is another thing that, that will help the licensees, uh, to be honest. But go ahead, you have another point to make. Which I hope comes back uh, confidential because it was brilliant. Well, uh, isn't it funny that BBC3 was recently announced that it was going back to going oh, back yeah. to satellite after it was digital for a while now all of a sudden it's coming back don't, don't be surprised and this is just speculation this is nothing i've received around but don't be surprised if we get something like a doctor who confidential returning and i think a lot of fans were sad at the time when that that did go away uh because that always gave us a look behind the scenes but maybe you know uh they didn't really want us to see a behind the scenes look anymore. I don't know, but yeah. maybe RTD because he has been open. Let's the, the first time round, so I don't expect them to be any different in that regard. And that'll only be good for Doctor Who magazine, who has struggled. Let's be honest. You know, this is it hasn't just affected the ratings of the main show. Everything else beyond has struggled. Now with him back, it gives everybody hope and optimism, especially the licensees. Yeah. Um, and and uh, you know it, the thing is he can do now what what he wanted to do years ago. You know he if you read the writer's tale, he, he, the, the most of the, th the ideas that he had. I mean he still has ideas in that book. You know he had the idea for a p companion called Penny, who was a character that was recently divorced, and she ends up. You know, heading off with the doctor. Um, eventually, he sort of worked a lot of that into Donna Noble's character, but there's nothing to stop him bringing that character back and making her its own thing again. A lot of the things, the ideas, original ideas he had, the problem was that he, the problem was that the budget. You know, he couldn't he couldn't do what he wanted because he didn't have the money to do what he wanted. And now, you know, when you've got bad wealth involved, who are at the minute up for sale. And the 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 talk doing the doing the rounds at the minute is that HBO is about to buy <laughs> HBO is about to buy Bad Wolf, so you know it will mean that HBO is pumping money into Doctor Who, which could you know double, dare I even say triple the budget. And I know money's not everything, but you know, it, it, it leaves him with a lot of breathing room that he, that he could do things that he might be able to do before. Yeah, I'm just reading some of the comments. Eddie posted a great little solution on Twitter. Everything from the Raven to the Timeless Child was the result of 12 Clara being attacked by dream crabs. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I think that, you know, I was I was watching your stream, uh, the one on Friday, um, when Melina was on. And uh, I had to laugh when she came out with her, with her, with her we saying that, that, that they're pendejos and cabron and uh, i just I, I just thought you know you're right uh you watch how moffat uh, i think i can't remember who said it in your stream i think it was melina uh moffat sort of basically retconned a lot of rtd stuff by saying that the cracks in time were making people forget about the daleks been here and 
this, that, and the other. You know, they're never going to retcon Jody Whittaker's era. It's never going to happen. As much as people want it to happen, it's never going to happen. But I think RTD could have like a sneaky line in there. You know, it could be a throwaway line that just completely disregards the time this child in a second. Something that just completely writes it off. Um, but another no- note I made is that I don't want them. I don't, I don't want them to go near Gallifrey or the Time Lords. I want them to stay away because we've had enough of that recently. And I know there's a lot of ones there saying, yeah, he needs to retcon this, that, and the other. That can be done in a, a few lines. That can be done in a few lines, either by the doctor or somebody else that shows up. Um, but I think the whole Gallifrey thing has sort of been overdone. Uh, it was sort of getting overdone by Moffat towards the end of his era. Now we have Chibnall, and God only knows what he's going to do in Series 13 with regards to ancient Gallifrey. Um, but yeah, I sort of would like them to go away for a while, or at least if they came back, um, you could sort of say Gallifrey's back, but like, don't bring them into the mix. Maybe have it where he's he, she, whoever it is, is, going to, is called to Gallifrey for something, for an episode, and then gone again. Uh, this over reliance of Gallifrey just just has sort of been overdone. I think they just need to go away for a bit. Yeah, I I would have to agree with you. I mean, with all the effort that Moffat made to bring Gallifrey back, then for Chris Chibnall to destroy it again, and I, I agree with you. I don't want the RTD era now to get bogged down in even bringing Gallifrey back but if he does it in, in the way that you said then I have no problem and then yeah I wouldn't mind seeing a kind of a classic where the Time Lords during the classic era um, called upon the Doctor the odd time to do a mission for them um, I, w- I wouldn't like, mind seeing something like that but I do agree with you I have them in the background uh, just sort of like, like you know every maybe one episode a season or two episodes a season where Magically, somehow the TARDIS is just on track straight to Gallifrey, and you know the Doctor Lance gets out of the TARDIS and is greeted by, I don't know, someone, someone, and, and say, "Look, we need you to do such and such," and then you know have that episode revolve around them, and then done away again. But you know they are sort of there in the background, but don't bring them in as a big player. So what other uh, stuff did you write down? Uh, since the announcement's being made, anything else important you want to highlight? Um, I think, I think he will, I think he can, and he, and he will do a female doctor justice. Um, if, if, if he, if, if he, if he does decide to go down that route, um, I mean, I, I've watched it to sell there again recently, and you know, Lydia West seems to be the actress sticking out in my mind. Not if they were going to do it, she's the kind of doll that would fit well for it. Um, there's also this rumor. Do you remember this rumor that went round about Leaveston Studios that we talked about ages ago? Yeah. Uh, you know, a HBO link to that. Could that be where production's moving? We don't know. Uh, could this play end it now? Um, what else have I said? Ed Thomas's secret TARDIS design, which appeared on Twitter today. Apparently, Ed Thomas had a design for a TARDIS uh, that was never used. Uh, clearly because Moffat had a certain way he wanted it to look. Um, he sort of stuck with that. Um, but if you read that interview, apparently Chibnall wanted to see this design, uh, but he didn't show it to him. He said he would hang on to it in case it was ever needed again. Um, maybe this could be the fancy TARDIS design, the 360 thing that you were talking about. This could be the one that uh, he spoke about. Because it wouldn't surprise me if they did bring him back to build the TARDIS. Uh, uh, Talents and Eggleston's one is my favourite, next to the, the old classic 80s one. So, yeah, I'd like to see him come back. Uh, and I think the last thing I wrote was Take It Off Earth. The last three series have been grounded on Earth. Nearly every episode's been on Earth. Yeah, or an uh, yeah, uh, alien planet. Well, not a great alien planet. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
take us to flipping, you know, bring in the RTD, well, you know, take us to Pyrovillia, take us to the Lost Moon of Push, take us to Clob, all these planets that RTD mentioned, they all get they all get name dropped. Take us there, take us to I don't new know planets, take new us to the Bay of Orion. Yeah. Uh, Christ, Honestly. take us take us to Castor Valva again. Take us just take us somewhere uh that's that's a bit different, that's not Earth. Uh Christ, I wouldn't even mind a story in Skyro again. But you know, even Mondas, Mondas hasn't been touched. The, the home of the Cybermen has not been touched in the modern era at all. No, uh, but do do it properly this time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. want to see a proper Cyberman story with Cybermen. I would and, love them for the go to like a real, and that's another thing that's just come into my head. And I never wrote that one down. I'd love to see him have a crack at redesigning the Daleks once again on the Cybermen. Uh, properly, you know. Do them, you, you know, like he just completely change them, like he done, like he done the classics to the the, the bronze ones, you know, change them again. Uh, I love him to go for like a, a, I love him to go pure body horror when it comes to the Cybermen. Something that would freak freak the kids out. I think would work, but yeah, I, I I just think well, I think it's pretty much a given anyway that that's going to happen because if they're moving to a new production. You know, they're moving production to Bali. I will say, can I just say that all sounds great, yeah, but I wouldn't want them all in his first. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now. Um, I think he should come back fresh for his four series and then slowly introduce them. Um, I think somebody suggests the idea that he should pull a Chris Chibnall and do like brand new monsters for the first series and then do bring them back in, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I, we need a bit of a breather though because Chibnall's been doing the Daleks. If you bring the Daleks back in again, yeah, you know, it'd have to be something spectacular. So I'd give it a season or two if he does, if it is beyond, we don't know what beyond means, but so far, but we don't know if he'll stay one season and, and, and train someone in to take over and then he'll just step down as executive producer and let someone else show run. But obviously, he'd still be. Calling. I reckon he'll, he'll he'll bring in the he'll bring in. Uh, I think I think I reckon that he'll pro he's probably has been asked to find a successor, even though he has taken over. Um, you know, he'll probably bring in the old writers or, or bring in the selection of writers that he thinks can write and wants to write. And then towards the end of his era, well, you know. Well, I think he's going to stay throughout this whole era. Whoever this new doctor is, I reckon he'll stay to the end and then he'll go. Uh, and then I think he it'll be a decision between him, Bad Wolf, and BBC Studios on the same right. Which which episode performed best out of the whole lot of them? And then, you know, if there's somebody there that's raking up two, three, four episodes that are solid episodes that were well received, you know, that's the person to go for. Here's what I was going to say to you. Right. Um obviously the current production team will be are, are have wrapped up obviously uh the series is done now. Um do you think uh there'll be any survivors from the Chibnall era that will make it into the RTD uh writers room? For example, a lot of fans during this era said, have said that Pete Mateague has a bit of potential, and uh, your woman that wrote the haunting of the yeah, Maxine, Maxine Alderton, yeah, Maxine Alderton have potential. Would you keep those two, and and obviously the rest are gone, or would you <sighs> rather a clean slate? I sort of a tough call that one. Um, I wouldn't mind them coming in. Uh, if RTD has like a, a pitch for them, maybe he could co-write an episode with them. Uh, I would. You know, he's co-written episodes before, so yeah. I, I think Maxine Alderton is. You know, I, she, I wouldn't mind her seeing her again. What she has to do, Pete McTeague. He could. You know, it, it is there. I can understand if he if he wanted to go for a clean slate, but yeah, I think out of you know, if I had to pick two writers, if I had to pick two writers out of that to come in it would be them too it they, would, they wouldn't it because the rest have been pretty poor you wouldn't be bringing ed hyman ever again anyway no nah, nah, no way um but people are saying in the chat clean slate please 
Yeah, I, I, you know, he might even bring in some people if he's brought new writers in for the other shows that he's done. He might actually bring them in. He does have a habit of bringing people in, which Marty has rightly pointed out that he's worked with before and he feels comfortable with working with. But he clearly has a plan. And as it's being framed, this is a clear rescue mission. And I hope he can drag this show into the... The, uh, the 24th century. And it's, it's simple as this, right? You know, for, for them, this is so-called rescue mission. The only way that this is going to work is if they let him make the final call on everything. So, you know, people that are saying they're worried about politics being a main player in here, you know, I, I, I obviously cautiously optimistic like yourself, but I would say, listen, you know, if I if I was in there and they were and they were thinking of still going down that route, I would say, listen, you know, if you want this show to survive, if you want this money to keep raking in, you've got to give this man the final say. You know, what he say goes. You know, if he says jump, you say how high. That's as simple as that. He's got to be the guy making the calls here. Not you know, and I, I hope it's I hope it's the majority of the decisions being made here is between him, Julie Gardner, and Jane Trander. Um, and I just hope it's. It's, it's the three of them making the decisions. I don't think, but again, I'll say it to you, and this is why I'm I'm optimistic. I don't think personally this man would come back if he didn't. Look, we know he loves the show, right? And automatically that would be a tick in, uh, in his box of a reason to come back, right? But there's so many negatives coming back as well. Think about it. Doctor Who hasn't performed well, right, over these last few years there's negativity in the fan base there's negativity towards the show you know no matter what the other side dress it up as this era has not been well received and the end of discussion it yeah. hasn't lowest rating since the the late 80s that says everything that needs to be said i honestly do not believe that this man would be coming back if he didn't have final say and his team didn't have final say Yes, you can love the show so much and you can come back out of loyalty, but I don't think that's enough for him. I think no, I, I think that if he, he's coming back, he knows he's coming back and he's calling all the shots and he has final say. Even in the writer's tale, that book that he wrote, you know, you can you can read it himself. He has, you know, he he had to be uh he had to be, I'll just say it, he had to be a cheeky bastard because he wanted it his way. And he admits it himself that maybe he was a bit harsh, but at the end of the day, if he wants something, if he wants it to be a certain way, he will fight till he gets it that way. And he said even several times that, you know, there was bust-ups between him and Julie Gardner and, and, and Jane Trander back in the day over budget. I mean, in the book, he even says himself that he wanted to put his own money into the show to produce it he, because the budget was that restricted back in the day. He wanted to, he literally you know contacted everybody he could within the bbc and said listen is there any way i can put my own money into this he was willing to like put part of his salary into like making those last specials for david Tennant. yeah and that doesn't show you loyalty to the show i don't know what is that's what i mean he is loyal but i don't think that it, it, it's that's his reasons for coming back i think his reasons for coming back are are more deeper he has a plan he obviously um you know believes because uh he has been quoted as saying the only time he'd come back is if the show was dead and and needed me to come back and i think uh, the show is dead and i think he he sees that but I, I also believe that he has a plan and he wouldn't be coming back i think he pitched his plan i think everybody was happy with his plan and i do honestly believe he's gonna have final say on the final product as for money we're told that they're throwing everything at this. I, I I was talking to people on Saturday. I don't I don't know how accurate this is. I don't know how um, you know how reliable this is. But someone told me that that that, that, that there was talk of the budget hitting upwards to 40, 50 million. Under, under because of the money that they're getting from HBO, the money they're getting from China, um, the money that they'll probably get from Bad Wolf as well. 
and think about it now now that russell's back the buzz is back where as i said license is and obviously those companies that have made deals with the the bbc over uh doctor who so you know i think it is a look it's it's a brilliant bit of business for bbc as in it's a master stroke uh to, how do you generate buzz for a show again okay let's go back and bring back the original uh the original uh new who creator bring him back bring bring back the original showrunner already it's generated buzz all over the place yeah. right but that people... is a master stroke on the on the other hand right it's also bbc saying okay we messed up but not actually publicly coming out because as i said for people out there that want apologies off the bbc and i've been one of them right they'll never apologize they'll never admit that they got it wrong this is their way in a way saying that they got it wrong right because you're bringing back someone that brought doctor who back in the first place if you're turning to him right that's telling me that you are desperate that you've been backed into a corner that you can't get out of right but he's he's are lucky because this man obviously has a plan and whatever he pitched you is obviously one years over so yeah as i said i don't think bbc as i said it's out bbc's hands anyway but i don't think there's going to be any interference i think he's going to left be left to his own the the voices and i think he's going to give us something amazing i just don't know what that is yet but whatever it is i know i'm going to be watching every week to see what he does and yeah. I haven't felt this excited in five years. So he's a, uh, you, you know, I, I remember that the, the, the years ago on the uh, the Doctor Who magazine, he always like put a section on the production notes. You know, for, nowadays you don't hear from Chibnall. You hear from Chibnall maybe once every three months. And my, from my experience, as far as I remember, Russell T Davis was writing production notes, maybe every week every two weeks he always was sort of there uh keeping the fans engaged you know yeah this is what's going to be completely different now um yeah. we're gonna see it completely different and even now like you know bad wolf productions have thrown up uh some stuff on twitter already so you can see there's already engagement there straight away and he hasn't even you know He's not officially took over yet until like it's announced that Chris Chibnall has we know they're gone, but the day that they actually leave then will be the day that he takes over and he takes over from Chris. So I mean already there's engagement there with the fans. So it's an exciting time, really is. I I'm I'm I'm, I'm buzzing. I, I haven't stopped smiling about it, thinking about it, going through things in my head like all fans right now. Yeah. Um, this is why I've been doing these streams because it's fascinating to hear what everybody is thinking. And it's been overwhelmingly positive. And again, I will say this. I do understand that for, for some of our fans out there, RTD's announcement and it being co-produced is not is not enough right now for us to be convinced um but i hope he does over the next when he does officially take over and then he goes into full gear i hope he can convince uh the rest of us and hopefully convince us that we're right to be this optimistic about it uh, i hope it doesn't blow up in me face because that'd be I'd be devastated if it did. I don't think he's he's back to do any of that. I think he's back to just write Doctor Who, and that's important. Um, yeah. But I'm gonna stay positive until I have a reason to be slightly worried. But I at right now I'm buzzing, and it's nice to see that other people are buzzing as well. Um, we'll see how long this lasts for, though. That's the thing. That's it. Um, but the next big thing will be the casting of his doctor because uh -huh. then we'll have to do a stream where we come on and then we're going to talk about 
what this what kind of character this doctor is gonna have what's he gonna do with that and that'll be interesting uh but we're gonna have to finish up now uh marty so any final thoughts before we we end it tonight not really just um sit tight because um i think we're out to get something that we aren't expecting and i mean that in a very good way um i've you, you, if you just want to know what, what what bad wolf's like production wise go and watch his dark materials on the iPlayer. um just the the the, the look of it is just like you, you know i know doctor who sort of looks sort of cinematic at the minute but the look of that is just like something you would sit down to watch in in the theaters it's just breathtaking the cinematography in it and you know if that's the team that they're going to bring in to, to make doctor who because i know his dark materials is finishing this year and this is the production team they're bringing in my god it's it's going to be something else let me tell you yeah uh what a way to end on a positive note well we have been positive um and for a lot of people in the chat i do see that the casting of the doctor will be very pit pitiful uh in his decision uh whether you are gonna start believing uh if uh that this could be good um and i do agree i think the casting of the the doctor and the companion will will make or break for some fans uh other fans it'll be when they see the trailer maybe or they watch a, their fo the first couple of episodes be under no illusion though that even those fans that are slightly more um they 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 just haven't made up their mind yet um yeah. basically they'll all watch to see um because they'll be just as intrigued as we are um it's just going to be a harder sell for a lot more other fans right now um and listen while i do i am optimistic um i do share some of the concerns that fans do have but mm. at the end of the day i'm not going to focus on the negative right now because you know it's had had such a positive and and had a, a, a created a buzz around the fandom that i haven't seen in years so we should enjoy this moment as fans uh because you know it is the return of rtd and he did some amazing things when he took over the show so you know we've been talking on this channel for the last few years and rtd's name has always been brought up we always compared chibnall to rtd mostly yeah. you know so why did we do that because we have such a love for his era so and every most people in the chat were, were thinking the same thing we always compare them to rtd chibnall so you know they're bringing back the man that we've all had so much respect for yet to be fans out there that didn't like everything that rtd done that's normal just like i didn't like some things that stephen moffat did with the show that's normal yeah i just didn't like anything that chris chibnall did in, in his air but that's a completely different story yeah. but but you're allowed those opinions um yeah. so we'll wait and see for the rest of the fan listen i hope i hope he does it all justice because it, it i i think it's thought this fandom needs to come together again i think this fandom needs to come together and enjoy doctor who again i think this fandom needs to come together and come up with their l uh their, their thoughts and their feelings about what he's doing with the air and then come up with their own little theories about what he might do with the show this is what this is all about this hasn't happened in five years under chris chib now maybe with the fans that do support this era uh current era have done that but we haven't really seen it you know what i mean we, we, Put it this way right i have not been up as optimistic about this show in in the 12 years since he since he left wow i have not you know obviously i enjoyed moffat till about series six and my my love of the show has slowly been declining since since that news on friday 
my levels of excitement have shot the way back up to what they were when I was nine years of age. I'm 21 now. I, the way I have been feeling the past few days, I haven't felt since I was about nine years of age. So, you know, my optimism is very, you know, I, I, I go by everything that he's done years and years, cucumber, it's a sin, you know, there, I don't think there's, you know, I, I will eat me words if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's anything to worry about. I think we are in safe hands, you know, he's going to please everybody and, you know, there's nothing to fear here, I think. Yeah, and that's the key thing I will leave with. Uh, as Garminator said yesterday, you know, it truly will be space for all um, under RTD. That is guaranteed. That's what he was so good at doing, was bringing the normies in, the British public falling in love with it, the Americans falling in love with it, uh, uh, Doctor Who fans that have been fans since the classic era falling in love with it. He will bring everybody together. Um He's got a big job now. Listen, the under no illusions, as we discussed on this channel a few weeks back when we were talking about what job the next showrunner would actually have. The under no illusion, this is uh, going to be his toughest uh, job. Um, I mean, this is tougher than 2005. What he's getting himself in for here, and I have every faith in them, is going to be, you know, this is tougher than the show been resurrected. Yeah. You know, this is this this is this is you know double I don't like saying it but it's double the pressure for the man but I do yeah. think I do think he's gonna I do think he has the nerve to to, to pull it off I, I do as well I'm optimistic I really am but uh, Marty do you want to do any uh do you want to shout out your social medias or anything like that uh, yeah you know where to find me on Twitter I meant to say at the start of this there's actually a few guys from my university watching this like watching this right now so uh yeah I sent them a like earlier on so uh hello to them if they're listening uh because I I, I sort of surprised them and said I was doing this so yeah I hope they're listening but yeah, you know where to find me on Twitter. I'm sure somebody will drop it below. But no, that's it. Just uh, fasten your seatbelts because I reckon the next 18 months is going to be a whirlwind. Uh, the second the credit troll on Jody Whittaker's final episode, uh, I just think it's going to be a completely different. Oh, uh, I do. I think it's going to be full steam ahead. I think yes. that uh, from from that day onwards, uh -huh. uh, there's going to be a real push now for this this era. Um, I think his team's going to be working the overdrive. We're going to get little snippets uh, here, there, and everywhere because that's what he does. He'll do his interviews that he has to do, uh, like every show runner. I'm telling you, he, his first interview, proper interview, when he sits down to discuss why he took. When he why he comes back and all because he he will he will obviously highlight all of that but then when he starts laying down or dropping little hints about what he's going to start doing yeah right that's when the the the, the it'll go two ways the leader be even more buzz than there was when he was announced or a lot of fans fears might come true and this could all be you know a big let down but i'd like to think that it's the latter uh to be quite honest yeah um, i'm excited i have to say marty listen thanks for coming on uh you know you're more than welcome on any other time we will be discussing this man and and uh whatever uh potential uh writers are going to be teaming up with them uh we'll be keeping on top of this anyway uh so you're more than welcome on any time because uh, I know you've been a huge fan. This was your era. Uh, this was your show, your first show runner uh, to, uh, to Doctor Who. So I'm I'm delighted for you because uh, <laughs> your reaction, your reaction when I did try bring you on, um, summed up a lot in this fandom. Uh, it was an emotional one. It was one that I think for a lot of fans they didn't see coming um and i think that's where 
why everybody is still kind of in shock as well um nobody out there in the fandom thought that this was possible um but of course uh we knew there was a possibility because his name uh was dropped uh on this channel uh in november um and you know there was talks of moffat as well it was it was yeah i just you know i'm over the moon i'm over the moon i just i'm just buzzed but listen thanks for coming on we'll see you soon marty and uh yeah let's hope we we start hearing some stuff pretty soon man man the sooner this era is over the better what <laughs> come on roll on rtd golden age too rtd too <laughs> as it's been that's called it. that's what it's being called oh RTD. we've got a, i've got a super chat there so hold on i'll read that so we've got a 20 australian if i'm correct a 20 australian dollar super chat i am so excited for this i just i'm really sad that we have to wait so long to see what russell t uh has in store for us i really missed rtd's writing and story arcs example bad wolf in series one i agree i, I agree he does do some great uh great story arcs and that's another thing that he does very well his character development is perfect and as as we've said we know his era See, this is a misconception from the other side to say oh they hate the political agenda no 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 we rtd's era was politically uh charged the difference was his story first and whatever agenda he had he he it'd be subtle but you'd know what he was talking about yeah this is the whole thing about and then sometimes he'd be blatant about it but he'd do it in a way that was tactful tasteful not shoehorned in you know he'd lay, lay, lay down the groundwork first and that's what he was always good at so uh patrick thank you for that super chat it really is an exciting time for you for everybody uh but i am delighted for the rtd fans especially uh because this announcement for you guys in, in particular uh would have been a lot more emotional um but i felt it i have to say because as i said the show came back at a nice time for me in my life and it changed changed me life actually um so that was down to rtd and his team so as i said i've always thanked them for that so to see him back i'm i'm, I'm buzzing i'm buzzing i'm still buzzing right i'm gonna shut up now because i've got another stream in 12 feck feck minutes now because <laughs> we've got, uh, uh some rick and marty so uh if you can all come and join me for that uh i'll put the link up now in a few minutes i'm a little bit behind on everything i know but look i've loved down these streams yes uh feeling the buzz off other people as well it's kind of hyping my buzz up even more uh we'll be doing an, a, a another stream with jack soon uh jack who as you know has been drawing those lovely rabbit uh drawings i'll be having jack on to get his thoughts about rtd as i said i want to keep the positivity going you know there's been a lot of negativity over the last five years i want to shake all of that crap off now and start thinking positively looking it uh, looking to the future with a bit of positivity and you know uh this era will 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 go and i will be reviewing it obviously but that'll be it then after this era is done it'll be back then heavily promoting the rtd era talking about what we think having a conspiracy theories of what we think you might do all of that other stuff that we used to do i'm looking forward to it. we've got some good times ahead folks yeah. uh right. exciting times ahead and i'm going to embrace it and if people if people uh think that i've jumped the gun and stuff like that that's fair enough you know um but i'm going to uh stick with the positivity because you know at the end of the day for the last five years since that the other two were, were were announced there's been nothing but negativity in the fandom and we've all played our part right we've all played our part nobody's hands are clean here um and i'm just done with it all now i don't care what the other they could still criticize me all they want i'm gonna stay positive about this and 
wait and see what happens and i'll judge it uh on its merits but i know he won't let us down he, he, he won't he's not coming back to let us down he's coming back to jack drag this show back up the ratings and he's he's here to to heal this fandom because it needs it I'm telling you he is yep. the doctor right um i'll leave it at that anyway um so thanks marty for joining me again and uh thanks everybody in the chat and and, and thanks patrick for that uh, uh super chat i'm gonna go now um because i've got to literally leave this stream now and then go and set up my other one and get ready all over again but it's rick and marty so i'll be able to have a bit of a uh, well i'm already buzzing but i mean i'll be able to have a laugh now <laughs> as well Right, talk to you later, folks. Have a good right. one. Good luck. See you. Good luck. Bye-bye.